Sparks, how are you doing? I just wanted to take a moment and to tell you guys about some of my favorite Christian heroes. These are people that came after the Bible, were believers that were ordinary people that ended up doing extraordinary things for God. And the one I want to start off with you is George Mueller. I love George Mueller, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. He lived a little over 200 years ago. Um, if you look at my timeline up here, he's up here with Lewis and Clark, and Sakjewa, and the Alamo, and Davy Crockett. That's the time period, only he lived in England, not America, the United States. So, here's George Mueller, and I'm not going to read all the words. I'm going to just kind of tell you the story. Okay. 1830s, George Mueller is a pastor, a minister who's from Germany, and he's currently in England. And he's really excited because he is going to soon get to go and leave, and he's going to go be a missionary. And he is super excited about it because he doesn't particularly like England. It's muddy, they drink tea, and he doesn't very much like it. So, he had lived there for months, and it was dirty, and there's disease, and it's stinky, and he didn't like it. He was looking forward to going somewhere wide open, like, I don't know, Africa, or the tropics. He thought it'd be cool to serve God there. And so, he just had a few more weeks left here in Bristol, and he was excited about it. Well, on his way home, he got stopped by a little girl named Emily. By the way, this is a true story by Emily. And Emily on her back has her little brother. And she asks George Mueller if he has a penny so that she could get them something to eat because their mom and dad are dead. And she has to take care of her little brother. And she's little. She's only like five or six. She's a spark. And George didn't know what to do. And so he gave her some money. But as he went home that night, all he could think about was Emily and her little brother. And so he looked at her and he worried about her as she left. And he talked to his wife. And in that day, after meeting Emily, George, God changed George's heart. And George decided he was going to do something about all the little Emilies that lived in Bristol. And so first, he and his wife started a breakfast club. They made breakfast and all the orphans could come and get something to eat. So you see, they started with that. Well, uh, they made oatmeal and they added sugar and tea. So, and then we have another little, other little kids and see, they live with the rats and stuff. You. So, and then we have another little boy that William and that he would dance and stuff trying to get money. Now George was not just satisfied, see he's preaching, not just satisfied with the breakfast club. He wanted more. He wanted somewhere for the kids to live so they didn't have to live on the streets. He wanted them to be able to learn to read and to write because you can't go to school if you don't have somewhere to live. And so he was going to start building orphanages. These were houses where the kids could live. But the thing was, George Mueller was not going to ask anyone for the money. He knew that God would provide for them because this was God's plan. And so he started, and sure enough, he was surprised. Five houses in the country. See, there's Emily and her little brother. Don't they look so much better now? And there's William. He's getting to learn to read. But the cool thing was he really never asked anyone for money. So here's a picture of all the children ready for dinner. And you you notice what's on the plates? Nothing. There's nothing there. But look at this. God woke the baker up. And the baker spent all night and made bread for them. And he just brought them. George never told them they needed bread. And then the milkman, his cart broke. And so he brought fresh milk right outside the orphanage. It broke down and he had to take all the milk out. And now it was going to get wasted unless the children would drink it. And so over and over and over again, 
God provided for the children. Just like in the Bible, it says that God will provide for the sparrows. God used George Mueller. And over the course of his life, if this one little grain of rice, see my little grain of rice, was George Mueller. These are how many people he took care of. So here's George Mueller. And here are the 3,000 children God used him to take care of. And so, what can we learn from George Mueller? Well, one, sometimes being a missionary is a big and glamorous. George never left England. He never left the stinky cold place he didn't particularly like. But he did amazing things for God in taking care of the children, just the people around him that had needs. And the other thing that George did, and you can do this with your parents if you want, is that at one point someone gave him a lot of jewelry to pay for the food for the children. And he took one of the little diamonds, and we're not using diamonds, but he took one of the little diamonds because they're super sharp, and he scratched in his window. Don't scratch in your windows. And he wrote Jehovah Jireh, which means in he which is the Hebrew word for God will provide. God's the provider. And so if you, with your parents, you take some aluminum foil, put it around some craft foam, or also you could use cardboard. And then with markers, you can make a window to put on your wall to remind you during these crazy times that God will provide. Now, we love y'all. I hope you guys have a great week. Make sure you say your sections to your parents. And I will try next week to come with another Hero of the Faith. Bye.